What's going on YouTube OCD for EDC here and what I got for your face balls today is a little Kershaw knife. This happens to be the special edition knockout 1870 CF M390 edition. So let's just get right into this guy. So it comes in a standard Kershaw box. You got your papers and shit down in there. We'll just throw that off to the side and plastic bag, what have you. All right, here's the knife right here. The Kershaw Knockout has been around for a little while. Um, this happens to be a pretty, pretty nicely upgraded model though. Uh, I've been carrying this for a couple of days and yeah, so let's talk about it a bit. We'll uh, start out here by doing a few size comparisons. Here it is with the uh, Benchmade Bug Out and the Spyderco uh, Para 3 Lightweight. I'll line them up on the back side here so you can see the, the knockouts a little bit larger. Here it is with the Manix 2 and the Hogue Deca. Got to get the deck in there just for William, if you know what I mean, William. <laughs> anyway, so you can see we're talking about a pretty decent size uh, EDC knife. Um, and we'll throw out another M390 Kershaw. Here it is uh, against the uh, Kershaw Link in M390. So you can see they're really, really similar in overall length. So what, uh, what are we looking at here with the, the knockout? So we've got an overall length here of 7.875 inches. You've got a blade length. If you measure from this point of the scale here to the very tip, is it measures 3.150. However, if you measure the cutting edge of this blade, you have a length of three and a half inches. So you have a fairly tall blade here and if you measure right here from the, the very heel of the blade uh, or cutting edge to the point, it measures exactly three and a half inches. So you get quite a bit of cutting edge uh, in a pretty small package here. Uh, handle length is 4.72 inches. Handle thickness is very, very thin at 400 thousandths. Uh, so you just got four tenths of an inch there. Uh, blade stock is 120 thousandths and it is a flat ground blade a pretty high flat grind and uh, behind the edge thickness it ranges anywhere from 20 thousandths to 22 thousandths depending on uh, where you're measuring so you know not the thinnest behind the edge but not terrible for a production knife <clears throat> and the blade here you can see as far as i'm con or as far as i know this is the only configuration this particular uh, special edition or limited edition comes in so you've got uh, full carbon fiber uh, scales, and you can see here that the this kind of main section of carbon fiber, you can see the light reflecting off of it there. Um, it's not totally smooth. It, it does have a smooth finish, but you do have uh, a little uh, difference in, in height there uh, with the weave of the carbon fiber. So you can feel some very, very light texturing. And then in these, you can see there's a, a milled line right here and then down here in this area, um, <clears throat> those are finished uh, slightly different. Again, pretty smooth. So there's not a lot of, of uh, texture or grip on this knife. Uh, it's not terrible in hand. Uh, it is a little cramped for my big hands. So for me, this is really a, a three finger knife, but it is comfortable. Um, you have this kind of depression right up here that, you know, your thumb sits very nicely. Works really well for this kind of pinch grip, uh, which I like to utilize knives like that quite a bit. So ergonomics are, are pretty decent on this knife. Um, certainly people that like uh, that, you know, sub eight inch long knife, I think this is going to work pretty well. Um, I, I don't uh, see... You know major ergonomic flaws here even though it is a little short for my hand you do have a, a pretty nice deep carry pocket clip um, it's not mounted to be 
100% deep carry, but it's pretty close. You only have, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch sticking out of your pocket. Uh, the screws under there are not recessed, um, but they don't stick. They don't sit right underneath the pocket clip. They're off to the sides. So, you know, it, it, it goes in and out of the pocket quite well. And in the hand, the pocket clip for me um, doesn't create too much of a hot spot. You do have the subframe lock here, and you can see that it's uh, fit very nicely uh, to the carbon fiber. And then the pivot on this side does sit flush. You do have that hexagon shape. And, you know, that, that works out well to be a captured pivot. And then on this side, the show side, you've got uh, T8 hardware up here on the pivot. And then the two body screws are black. And those are both T6. And then, of course, the pocket clip is reversible. And you do have a lanyard hole there in the back as well. Uh, it's, it's quite small lanyard hole. So although I personally don't do lanyards, um, I don't think you're fitting like 550 paracord through there. It's way too small for that. Um, I can tell you what the dimensions of that hole are. Yeah, just under an eighth of an inch uh, in diameter. So, so really really small hole there <clears throat> but overall you know I like the aesthetics of the knife I think it's a good looking knife and it is a flipper this does have the speed safe um, assist to it which if you're gonna have an assisted knife I, I, I like the Kershaw speed safe it works well uh, the main reason I like it is because for for half to right there you have no assist so that last 50 percent of the blade travel or the last 90 degrees if you will is completely unassisted so that helps for closing the knife you know you this thing is for sure one hand operation um but you know that last 90 degrees uh you're preloading the spring and you kind of it kind of cams over if you're not familiar with how a speed safe works uh, it's just it's different than than other assisted knives but but it works well and it's reliable um, and I will disassemble this knife here in a couple minutes so so yeah I you know no real complaints uh, thumb stud works well also uh, and yeah so flipper tab thumb stud it uh, works as advertised so that is good let's get a weight on this thing so like I said you've got uh, I think they advertise this as a three and a quarter inch blade like I said you know depending on where you measure it from it makes a huge difference you know so from that point right there I, like I said it's 3.15 inches and measuring let's uh, from measuring at the lowest part of the scale. Uh, let me move my hands around here. I've got this all backwards. We'll see if I can get this here. Uh, yeah, so you're, it's actually 3.559 inches uh, measuring from right there. Um, out to the tip of the blade so you know depending on where you measure it from you're going to get anywhere from 3.15 to 3.56 inches so it's a pretty big difference there um, but you do have three and a half inches of cutting edge which is is really great for a, a really small and, and certainly very thin package so weight on this guy 3.33 ounces there you go <laughs> so definitely falls into that category of an ounce an inch uh, not something that I necessarily uh, must or you know the tie on my list but but anyway it seems like a lot of people uh, like that so this definitely falls into that wheelhouse you know 3.33 ounces you got three and a half inches of cutting edge uh, not bad uh, balance point on this knife is really kind of right by the pivot right there 
so really about where you would expect it to be and uh you know really just a just a comfortable edc knife um you do have the kershaw logo on this side of the blade right here and it says kershaw speed safe usa and then on the back side you have this is an american made kershaw so you got the american flag and then you've got the uh, model number there 1870 cfm 390 and then the kai usa logo and then you also have this little logo down here which uh, stands for the in-house uh, kershaw designs so that's going to be a new thing on zt's and kershaw's for all of their in-house designs which is a fine thing um let's get into tearing this guy apart like i said this is a t8 i'm pretty sure and yes it is so there you go and then these screws here are t6 now uh one thing i did notice on the construction of this thing um the screws go through and there's actually uh, a threaded insert on the back side you can see right there and the same threaded inserts exist for the pocket clip as well which is a, a nice thing you know they're actually putting those inserts in there uh, on the carbon fiber which is which is great all right so there we go and you can see the carbon fiber there and you've got uh, the two body screws are a little bit longer because they go all the way through and this is what makes up your speed safe uh, mechanism here so you've got this stainless steel plate and then there's a uh, I think Kershaw refers to it as a torsion bar uh, but the spring that is right there so as this uh you can see it's riding on phosphor bronze washers i'm just going to set this plate off to the side <clears throat> but as the the speed safe bar um goes back and forth it just gets uh bent in such a way that it it creates that tension on the blade now they do put some thick grease inside here um that is you definitely want that in there if not, uh, this uh, torsion bar will rattle around inside the knife. So you definitely want that, uh, that grease in there. Just an FYI. So here's our blade. And there's your other phosphor bronze washer. Now, uh, if anybody has any plans on de-assisting this knife, um, I will tell you right now so you can see that you've got your detent ball right there in the lock bar and there's your subframe lock so you have a few screws that hold the subframe lock in and those screws are under the uh, pocket clip kind of hard to see them but they're underneath there and here is the stop pin it is it is a shouldered stop pin and it just goes into the carbon fiber um, but so back to this D assisting, uh, you can see you've got a detent ball right there and that detent ball is not actually to, it doesn't function as a detent ball. It, uh, is basically just there to keep the lock bar from rubbing up against the entire blade. So essentially it's like a bearing, um, and you can see the track at which it travels on the blade, but you'll notice on the blade there is not a hole for the detent ball to drop into so because of that um, i'm not saying you cannot de-assist this knife uh, you're just going to have to make a hole for that detent ball and you're going to have to make sure you know obviously it's going to have to be in the correct location uh, you're going to need something to keep the blade in the handle um, and be able to serve as that tension to be able to flip the knife out so uh, although anything's possible, this is not going to be uh, de-assistable easily, uh, we'll say. All right, so I'm just going to throw this back on. 
pretty straightforward construction nothing too carried away there but um, the carbon fiber is certainly nice there's no voids in it or anything um, it's a good looking carbon fiber and for the price of this knife I, I feel like it's a fairly decent value so there we go and then I'm gonna throw this little cover plate back on the uh, speed safe mechanism there and then you do have this backspacer the backspacer is plastic or potentially might be G10 no it just looks like plastic to me it looks just like injection molded plastic um, but that's fine you only really see uh, one portion of it or you know the spine of it anyway so not a big deal there So you can see that that rod sticking up through the hole there for the speed safe. That corresponds with that hole in the blade, if you can see that. So you got to make sure that you have that lined up when you go back together. So there is a hole right there in the in the blade. It's just not a detent hole. It's there for the speed safe. And then you've got to make sure that your backspacer is lined up. Now there is no other. Um, there, there are some holes in the carbon fiber, but there are no other alignment pins in this. So just the two body screws is what keeps all of this aligned, which I would have liked to have seen some alignment screws or alignment pins, I guess, in here, uh, just to keep the backspacer where you want it. Um, just because I'll show you here, this can move a little bit so the backspacer could either be flush the way you want it or could be down a little bit it just it just allows for movement there that that really didn't need to be there uh, they could have you know cured that problem with with some alignment pins but they chose not to and yeah it is what it is so i'm going to go ahead and attempt to get this speed safe in that hole like so actually I'm gonna take that washer and put it over the pivot that'll make my life a lot easier so this can be a little bit fidgety to do not the end of any worlds but if you don't get it in there correctly, you're going to know it as soon as you go to try to do anything with the knife. Okay. So, let me get a screw started here. Now, I'm going to leave these two body screws loose back here because we're going to come back and make some adjustments to these. And... Get my pivot screw in. My stop pin is in. Okay. Okay, so my assist bar is on. Everything else appears to be good. Um, yeah, now it appears to be good. That plate for the... Uh, speed safe had popped out of position slightly but here you go so you can see there that the backspacer i don't know how well that shows up on camera but the backspacer is sitting down below the the scales so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take <clears throat> my t8 driver here and i'm going to push that up from the inside and i'm going to make that flush with the back of the, the spine of the knife before I tighten up these screws. So, just like so. And I'm just pinching it there to hold it while I tighten up the screw. Okay. And right now we got quite a bit of blade play, so I need to tighten up the pivot. It's 
still got blade play. All right, there we go. We're getting there. Action is what you would expect. Centering is way off. All right, so centering is good now. Action is still good. Yep. No blade play. All right, I think we're there. So, um, this knife sells for, like I said, it is a, a limited edition model. Um, this knife sells online for, uh, Blade HQ actually had it for $129.95. And then I looked it up on some other sites and it was selling for $139.95. Um, but uh, a lot, most places are all sold out. If you want this knife, um, go and check out Omaha Knife. Talk to Ann or Curtis. Um, they have several of these in stock right now. I don't know exactly how many they have, but uh, call them up. I'll, I'm going to put their link in. Uh, I'll put a link into their website. I'll also put their phone number uh, in the description of this video. Hit them up and uh, tell them I sent you. And, you know, maybe they'll give you a discount on the knife or something. I don't know. They're really great people. And, yeah, certainly certainly would enjoy to, to uh, help support them and show them a little love. And if anyone's interested in this uh, Kershaw M390, you know, just over a hundred bucks, you can pick this knife up. It's a cool knife for sure. As far as I know, it's not going to be made again. So if you do want one of these, um, now's your chance. There's, uh, like I said, a lot of places are already sold out. And I have to believe that that's why the price is going up in other places. So if you want to get it at the original price, uh, hit up Omaha Knife, Ann or Curtis. Talk to either one of them. They will absolutely hook you up. And uh, like I said, let them know that uh, you saw this on my channel. And, you know, can't hurt at all. They're good people. So um, thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. And that's about all I had for your face balls today. We'll talk to you later. Have a good night.